Hello everyone. Welcome to the module on the respiratory system. In this module, we will talk about respiratory anatomy and structures passing through the diaphragm. Okay. So starting with the anatomy of the respiratory system, the respiratory tree is broken down into two segments that is the conducting zone and the respiratory zone. The conducting zone consists of large airways which is nose, pharynx, larynx, trachea and the bronchi. So these are the large airways of the conducting zone and the airway resistance is highest in large to medium sized bronchi. Okay. So remember that the airway resistance is highest in the large to medium sized bronchi. There are small airways like bronchioles that further divide into terminal bronchioles which are also part of conducting system. Now the small airways have a decreased resistance. Okay, The small airways have a decreased resistance because large number of them are arranged in parallel and as we know from the cardiovascular module that if any vessel is arranged in parallel the resistance decreases. Is this clear? So we spoke about the large airways and the small airways. Now talking about the various anatomic dead space. Okay, So warm humidifies and filters the air but does not participate in the gas exchange. Okay, So the segment of air inspired by the human body which is warm, humidified and filters the air but does not take part in the gas exchange in the respiratory zone is called as the anatomic dead space. Okay, I'll talk about anatomic dead space in the physiology modules. Now, the cartilage and the goblet cells present in the conducting zone extend till the end of the bronchi. Okay, this is one important point. The next important point is the pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelial cells primarily make up the epithelium of the bronchus and extend to the beginning of the terminal bronchioles. Okay, so it extends to the beginning of the terminal bronchioles. Is this clear? And they usually make up the epithelium of the bronchus. Now then after the terminal bronchioles, it is then transitioned into cuboidal cells. Okay, and the clear mucus and the debris from the lungs are helped to form the mucociliary escalator. Is this clear? So these pseudostratified ciliated columnar cells clear the mucus and debris from the lung and is called as the mucociliary escalator. Now the airway smooth muscle extend to the terminal bronchioles. Okay, so remember that the smooth muscles present in the airway are present at the end of the terminal bronchioles, whereas the pseudostratified columnar epithelium are present at the beginning of the terminal bronchioles. Am I clear? Now this is all about the conducting system. Coming to the respiratory system which takes part in the exchange of gas, there is lung parenchyma which consists of respiratory bronchioles, alveolar ducts and the alveoli. Now these are the sections that take place in the gaseous exchange. Am I clear? Now respiratory zone mostly consists of cuboidal cells in the respiratory bronchiole and then there is a transition to simple squamous cell to the alveoli. Okay, so first there is cuboidal cells and followed by simple squamous cells. Now the cilia terminates in the respiratory bronchioles itself and there is presence of one important cell type that is the alveolar macrophages which clear the debris and participate in the immune response. So alveolar macrophages are helpful in the immune response. Am I clear? Now let me take you to this important diagram and make it a little more clear. So the conducting zone starts from the trachea, bronchi, bronchioles and the terminal bronchioles. And this is the histology. So we know that the goblet cells and the cartilage are present till the end of bronchi. 
we have smooth muscle at the end of the terminal bronchial and the columnar epithelium or the pseudo stratified columnar epithelium ends by the end beginning of the terminal bronchial or the end of the bronchioles is this clear so this is all about the conducting system now talking about the respiratory system the respiratory system consists of the respiratory bronchioles and the alveolar sacs followed by the alveoli okay there is presence of cuboidal cells which then transitions into squamous cell and there is present of different type of cells that is type 1 pneumocytes and type 2 pneumocytes type 2 pneumocytes are responsible for production of surfactants okay so these are responsible for production of surfactant there is also presence of this alveolar macrophages which help in immune response and clear the cell debris so this is all about the conducting system and the respiratory system okay now talking about the anatomy of lung okay so lung anatomy in lung anatomy lung the right lung has three lobes and the left lung has two lobes plus the lingula okay the middle lobe in the left lung is absent and it is replaced by a mass of lung which is the lingula is this clear now the relation of the pulmonary artery the relation of the pulmonary artery to the bronchus at each lung hilum is very important okay so pulmonary artery to bronchus and where is it hilum now the relation is determined by r a l s okay so remember that in the right lung the pulmonary artery is anterior whereas in the left lung the pulmonary artery is superior in the hilum that's why i made a oval structure anterior in the right lung in the left lung superior is this clear now the carina or the bifurcation point of the right bronchus and the left bronchus is present posterior to the ascending aorta and anterior medial to the descending aorta i'll cover this in the x ray or the check x ray in the next slide okay so carina just remember that carina is posterior to the ascending aorta and anterior medial to the descending aorta am i clear now the right lung is the most common site of inhaled foreign bodies because the right main stem bronchi is much more wider vertical and shorter than the left okay because the left is making a greater angle whereas the right is much vertical okay now if a substance is to be aspirated or if a peanut is to be aspirated when the person lies in the supine position it usually enters the superior segment of the right lobe okay now examiners often like to you know come after these concepts so please remember that that whenever a person is in the supine position and a peanut is aspirated it is usually enters the superior segment of the right lobe while when the person is lying on the right side it enters the usually enters the upper lobe of the right lung okay so it enters the upper lobe of the right lung while when the person is standing upright or sitting upright it usually enters the lower part of the lower lobe okay Now, let me just explain you all the different parts this is the right lung this is the left lung the right lung has three sections that is the right upper lobe the right middle lobe and the right lower lobe the right upper lobe and the right middle lobe is separated by the horizontal fissure the right middle lobe and the right lower lobe is separated by the oblique fissure is this clear now in the left lung there is only presence of an oblique fissure which separates the left upper lobe and the left lower lobe and there is a presence of excessive tissue mass this tissue mass which substitutes the middle lobe is called as the lingula now remember that when a needle is to be positioned for tension pneumothorax it is usually in the second intercostal space and the mid clavicular line 
okay it is on the second intercostal space in the mid clavicular line this is the posterior view of the lungs that is the right lung and the left lung am i clear now coming to the basic chest x ray that i was supposed to explain this part talking about the ct scan first you can look at this part i have highlighted this is the bifurcation of the trachea and is called as the carina and the ascending aorta is anterior that means the carina is posterior to the ascending aorta and it is anterior medial to the descending aorta is this clear now talking about the chest x ray this is how a chest x ray is seen this is the right lung right upper lobe right middle lobe and the right lower lobe whereas this is the left lung and the left lower lobe and the left upper lobe is this clear so this is all about the lung anatomy okay now talking about one important structure that is the diaphragm which is very important in inspiration and expiration now the there are various structures that perforate the diaphragm at various levels okay so remember major structures that is at t8 or thoracic vertebrae 8 there is inferior vena cava and the right phrenic nerve which perforates the diaphragm okay so remember 8 for vena cava v e n a c a v a okay now for 10 there is esophagus and cranial nerve 10 which is vagus nerve and at t12 there are three structures that pass or perforate through the diaphragm that is aorta in the red thoracic duct in the white and the azygous vein in the blue so it is red white and blue or remember as t12 as a aortic hiatus okay now there is one important part that states the diaphragm is innervated by c3 c4 and c5 of the phrenic nerve okay or the phrenic nerve so the pain from the diaphragm or the irritation example the air blood or the pus in the peritoneal cavity can be referred to the shoulders because of the c3 phrenic nerve because of the c5 phrenic nerve which refers to the shoulders or the trapezius ridge because of c3 and c4 so c5 corresponding to the referred pain of the shoulder and c3 and c4 to the trapezius ridge is this clear so i have spoken about the different structures that perforate diaphragm there is one important section which states the different bifurcation points so just remember that the common carotid artery bifurcates at c4 the trachea bifurcates at t4 and the abdominal aorta bifurcates at l4 so c4 common carotid trachea t4 and abdominal aorta at l4 is this clear so this is all about respiratory anatomy and different structures passing through the diaphragm thank you for watching this video if you enjoyed the video please click on the like button and do subscribe to this channel let me know in the comment section below which topics do you want me to explain thank you